Hi, Rapstein of Glennon Associates with your morning flash update for this Wednesday. And we are now at the 22nd of January, 2020, about 9.15 a.m. Interesting day. The trial continues on for the president's impeachment. If you were up and watching Davos, you've seen the president speak again, give some more ideas. Get, of course, he couldn't control himself from saying that it's the Fed's fault that the U.S. GDP didn't hit 4 percent. They had tightened at the wrong time. The president has eyed Europe as its next target if Europe doesn't make some amends so that the president doesn't have to put tariffs on them, especially, and I, I think you're looking at the auto sector there, so it's probably very much geared at Germany as France doesn't really do the autos, but the president is making waves about that. U.S. stock market soared early on this morning, hitting another set of new highs. It's just a market that doesn't die. As you can see, gold is still a little bit lower, silver stabilizing, but the copper market getting hit, and I'm warning you, this corona virus that is going on is up to 400 and some odd cases now. There are eight or nine known deaths. Another case, uh, well, we know one case yesterday was in the U.S., but now Atlanta and Chicago are both putting in anyone coming in from China have to go through the screening. And the question is, is the World Health Organization going to declare this an emergency? And if that happens, you start really shutting down world travel. So this is a big event. You've got to pay attention to what's going on. We went through it in 2002. It's nothing new, but it affects typically the older people and so on. So be careful there. In the grain market today, we're looking at beans trying to be somewhat stable. Oil's gotten its pop uh, when it hit the 100-day in the lower Bollinger Band area, seemed to pop. And was this cotton break yesterday a one-day phenomenon? One of the things I keep looking at is cotton's an export item. Cotton's needed by China. Now, China's done a bunch of new things, but I'll get to that in the morning. First, our housing numbers came out, and at first you'd think this is phenomenal. National Association of Homing, uh, Home Sales up 3.6%. They expected 1.9. That's a blowout number. Existing home sales, 5.54 million units on an annualized rate. They expected right ab about 545. Existing home sales medium price. This is where things are getting problematic. Went up nearly 8% to 274, 500, and you only have a three month supply of homes. Just last year, we had a four and a quarter to four and a half month supply. You're now getting to dangerous numbers, and that means that those that want a home, they've got two elements. Number one, there's scarcity of them. Number two, you're going to pay up to get it. The Chicago Fed November National Activity Index down 0.35. The prior month was revised down also to 0.41 from 0.56, so we're seeing a little bit less activity. Uh, I said the home sales came out. I forgot to take that out. Red Book sales, they were good. Yeah, they were flat for the uh, first two weeks of January, but up 5.1% compared to uh, 2019. And the same thing going on if you look at the week ending January 18th versus a week ago. ISCC, ICFC weekly sales up uh, rather down 2.1% from the previous week. So a little different number there, but up 1.9% from a year ago. The French Statistic Agency is saying that the manufacturing sentiment increased there to 100 from 98. The outcome was seen below the forecast of 101, but still a good number. As expected, the Bank of Canada left interest rates unchanged. Don't forget that Canada is talking about uh, voting on the USMCA deal. I think it's January 29th. And in China, the problem here is that Pork is still in short supply. They're releasing more reserves. Then they did a, tip, a test of 250 samples from slaughterhouses in eight Chinese provinces. Five percent of them still had African swine fever. That's not acceptable. That's a huge percentage. You should get down to almost fractions of a percent if you had them. 
there's a number of problems. This problem's not going away from them. You would think you'd get a bid in the U.S. pork off of that, but we're still not quite seeing it. I, I think it will come. It's just a question of when it comes. Now, I want to remind you all about what I do. I know if you're like me, like I got up at 4 this morning, I'm watching Davos and all, and people wonder, do I ever sleep? I sleep, folks, but I, I'm, I, I'm smart with it. If I go to bed at 9 or 10, I, know to, I only need 6 hours, and I'm comfortable with it. I want to remind you, what I've tied in for the remainder of this month minimum is that anyone that's a subscriber to my morning subscriber video is also getting my spider ETF video that comes out right after the close of the market, ideally before 4 p.m. for those of you in those type of markets. So we're really covering the spectrum. My idea is always to give you a technical analysis, a touch of the fundamentals, and I want to be very specific by saying I want you to enter here. This is your exit point. There's your profit objective, and here's a stop. This is where I'm wrong on the market. And the idea is to give you that little bit of confidence. Maybe you're looking at all these markets going crazy and going, how do I get in them? In the futures markets, I cover all these. In the Spider F ETF, you'll see I cover the energy sectors. I cover the foreign currency markets with the Spider ETF. A lot of ETFs there. All the metal ETFs that I think are good, and I'm going to be adding to them. number of you writing me on YouTube, a couple of markets you want me to throw in, I'm going to do it. So... We'll see how this all works out. But this is how it works in the futures part in the morning. And there is on our website a scroll bar on the bottom of these, and you pull them. Let's assume you just wanted to go today for the energies. Pull right to the energies, and it lights up big. And as it lights up, you just let it go, plays that sector. If you want to go back to metals, go right back there. I get you introduced, and remember, you're getting the Spider ETF for free until the end of the month. The intro price to this, if you haven't tried it, $7.95, and that is for 30 days. We don't go by the month. It's 30 days. After 30 days, you decide in this uh, particular morning subscriber video, do you want to stay? Well, if you want to stay, what you'll discover is that's $15. Uh, for the next 30, or you can buy a one-year subscription for the equivalent of $13 a month. The prices on my Spider ETF are going to be a dollar more. I have to be able to, on the, all the billing we get, to know which one's which. So that's what we're going to do. It's certainly not any better than this, nor worse. But we want to keep them separate, so that's how that will work. I think you'll find it interesting. What do you have to lose? For $7.95, you get to look at both of them. How do you do this? Go to our website at www.irapstein.com. Under the word research, that's where you go. You cannot yet sign up for the Spider ETF. That's coming at the end of the month. But you can sign up for the morning subscriber video. Subscribe there. We'll make sure you get both in your hands. And remember, you still get our mobile platform. So as I put out these updates, it comes in, it plays in the mobile platform for you, and away you go. I'm I. Repstein. You have a great trade day, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care now.